Well, morning everyone. Um, thanks for watching. I just want to start this video with a big thank you, really. Um, I uploaded a couple of videos on my channel two years ago uh, about canal biking and perching, and I didn't check back on them until now. Um, and one of my videos has got 14,000 views, and I've been getting subscribers ever since. Um, and I just want to say thank you to everyone that's watched that video and subscribed to me. Um, it absolutely blew my mind, and it's kind of the reason I'm out here today. I thought, you know, if people are that keen to watch, then I'm going to get out and make some more videos. So you join me on the riverside, and we'll be after some trout, perch, chub, and grayling today. Nice, see you there. So a little run through of my kit. Got my hat, got my polarized sunglasses. They're gonna be really useful later. I'll show you what we can do with those. Um, got my waders on and otherwise, Diver Ninja 2000 loaded with eight pound sun game, sun line light game uh, with a six pound fluorocarbon leader. And it, on the rod, it's a HGO Rockfish 2. That's a 0.5 to seven gram rod. So in terms of lures, you could use this, which is a small bright white paddle tail from a Savage Gear micro sand deal kit. Or this little kind of oily coloured pumpkin CD uh, curly tail grab. I got this from AGM Fishing. Um, this is probably my most successful lure. It's only an inch long with the tail kicking out. It's about two inches. But that is a perfect imitation of most small bait fish in these rivers. And if you are after something a little bigger, you could try crankbait. This is a Salmo floating, uh, I think it's a bullhead, this one. Uh, and that's got some size 6 single hooks on it, barbless, easy uh, removal. And yeah, this is a quite successful law for picking out bigger fish, especially if there's chub in there as well. You will get a lot of chub on crankbait, so this would be a good lure to use. That all terminates in at the end of the two or three foot fluorocarbon leader in a HGO lure link that you can see there. It's really useful for swapping between jig heads and lures. Um, and right in the end, I've got an Eco Gear Shirasu jig head. I believe this is a 0.9 gram jig head, um, but they're perfect, nice and sharp. Barbless, I always fish barbless now. Um, it's just so much easier for catch and release fishing. Um, yeah, the lure's rigged quite nicely on there. It's nice and straight, so that tail should kick really well and it won't impede any of the movement on the back of the lure. Um, I'm gonna switch to the GoPro now and we'll get fishing and see what we can pull out. So I'm looking upstream, I'm seeing that nice bit of uh, vegetation over there. So I'm just gonna cast this across stream now. Nice. There we go, fish. Tiny little perch. Lovely little fish. See him there? Perfect. That's about the size we're going to be catching today as well. And he's off. Easy as that. I watched him follow pretty much from those reeds over there. So let's get back over there and see if there's some more. Ah. Oh. Cast right into that vegetation. There we go, hit again. Another perch. Tiny, tiny little fish. Just like that, he's unhooked. See you later. And again, another perch. It's a fish of cast so far. I'm gonna get him in my net. He's slightly bigger than the other one. This is a Cortland catch and release net. Um, really nice net, wooden, bamboo construction, rubber mesh. Um, absolutely perfect. Just gonna grab the lure, pop it, and the fish is back in. Check your lure every now and then, clear off any stuff that's landed on it. Um, 
the fish will be much less likely to take something if it's covered in. Oh, <laughs> right then. <laughs> it's great watching these fish come in. So there's a couple, quite a few grayling just sat right in front of me. I know you won't be able to see it through the GoPro. Um, I know those fish aren't going to take a lure now. If they're that close to me, they know I'm here. Um, they were either not interested before and they've been put off, you know, they might have been put off by me or they're just not interested in chasing anything. I've had grey lid on lures, they will take them. But yeah, I always find it a little bit futile if you manage to sneak up within two foot of a fish trying to cast a lure in front of it, it's not going to take it. So I just want to talk through our first block of cover that we found on this river. Um, in terms of structure, this is a really straight stretch um, other than this overhanging trees. But we do get this one section here, it's a little floating vegetation um, mat basically. There's a few uh, big logs that have jammed it up or whether they've been put there on purpose. But it pinches the flow a bit so it speeds it up coming through here and then under the tree there it's a real slack. Um, just in front of that, off to the right, um, back there, big trout, I cast my lure, dropped it in there and pulled it across and he came from that kind of slack edge in. So as the water pinches through here, it slows down there and it slows down there and he sat up in there. Um, he chased the lure for a second, I'm going to drop it in there again, see if we can have him out. No follow that time. Try and get it closer. No. Okay. Swing it into this slack. There we go. Perfect. I thought that was what was going to happen. So it all really depends on the river, but perch will like to find little slack areas. Um, and most other fish will, to be honest, it's, you know, they're spending less energy sitting there than they would be in this main flow. Um, so that's where they're gonna sit. That's where they're gonna wait and watch for food. The further you get your cast, you know, the more river you're gonna be covering. Um, oh. So it's really important, you know, get your cast upstream. There we go, there's a fish. Another little perch again. Here he is. Perfect little specimen there. Oh. Lovely little fish. Off you go, mate. Yeah, it's really important, get your cast upstream and fan them out across the river as you go. Um, what you don't want to be doing is walking up and spooking fish off. Um, if you're getting up, although the fish would mostly be facing upstream, if you get up behind them and you're within you know, 10 feet or more of them, they will feel you coming through vibrations in the riverbed. Um, so it's important you get your casts and cover those, cover those fish before you spook them off. There we go. Another perch. So these little perch are the perfect size um, for hunting little bait fish like this. Um, so that's probably why they're all going after them. You can change up your retrieve as you come back. Maybe a short pause. And a quick flick of the lure might entice them to strike, but oh, you see most of the time with these little paddle tails, a straight retrieve just works absolutely one fine. There we go, lost him and he came back again. So a quick little lesson in hydrology. Water flows faster at the top of the river than it does at the bottom of the river. Um, 
So if you get to a section river like this where there's no features that you can see whatsoever, there's no riverside vegetation mats, there's no fallen trees or anything, what you've got to be doing is looking under the water and this is where you need your polarising sunglasses. So I know there's a hole up here somewhere, just around there, and there's a nice little deep scallop, um, which means the fish will be down in there sheltering from the main flow so they're what they're doing is they're sitting there and they're waiting for food to come by before they move into the main flow they're not going to spend their entire day up at the top or in the faster set stretches of the river um, they're just going to waste energy so they're going to sit in those little flows so you'll find that most of this part of the river from about the riverbed to there down through here is going to be pretty empty of fish um, and you're going to find a really big concentration of them just up there near that willow herb that you can see. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little bit further up and just gonna cover that hole a few times with my lure and we will pull fish out. Okay, coming up on that hole, so I'm just gonna cast past it now. There we go, fish on straight away. Lovely little perch. Oh, he came off. That's fine. That's fine. We'll go again. Let's get the hole up there. Cast past it. Bring it through. Hit. That's a nicer fish. There we go. There we go. Hey, he's not the biggest perch, but he's the biggest of the day so far, I think. Maybe a quarter pound, but the colors on that are absolutely perfect. Back he goes. Right past the hole, then back across. Oh, there we go, there's a fish. He didn't fight for a second, and he's off. And hit again immediately hit. This river is absolutely dominated by very small perch this sort of size. Um, yesterday, I'll link a quick video to that as well, um, I caught a perch, probably the biggest one I've seen in here, about half a pound um, further up this river, so I'll show you a video of that one. Lovely little water bowl here. Off he goes. Okay, here's my paddle tail rigged up, ready to go. And again, we're still just covering that same hole in the river. There's still plenty of fish in there. Hit straight away. There we go, that's a fish. Another perch. Bit of a fight on him. Perfect. Lovely little perch. He loved that lure. See you later, buddy. Press on and find somewhere else that's got some fish. See, I've just pushed out of this hole an absolutely huge shoal of perch, grayling, chub, some little roach in there as well, but none of them were taken. I've drawed my lure through here 10 15 times no takes so these fish weren't interested today but that's fine there's always more here we go there's a fish what have we got another perch another perch he's just come off whilst it's really tempting to get a wonder cast right under that tree what you don't want to do is get snagged up and have to walk over there to clear your snag because you'll just scare all the fish off. So it's better to, oh, here's a fish. Uh, it's better to work, work your lure up there, get your cast more and more confident, unless you are confident at getting those accurate casts underneath trees, in which case go for it. Oh, this guy's kicking a bit more. Another perch. Nice. 
the little thing. The pops out, easy, fishes back in. So I think I'm just about to wrap it up there. Um, I'm gonna have a few more casts under that tree just before I go, see what I can pick up. Um, but honestly, it's been a really good session. Uh, thank you for watching. I think I've picked up about well, God knows, maybe 30 perch or more. I'll, I'll do a little tally, hopefully, in the corner, and we'll see what we get. Um, I was hoping to pick up a trout today, but I've seen a few rises, and I think the trout are mostly interested in all the insects hatching off. Um, so that means in a couple of weeks, I'll come back out with my dry fly outfit um, and see if I can pick up any rising fish. I'll probably catch the grayling and the trout that time, unless so on the perch, um, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, thank you for watching. If you've got a comment, leave a comment. Please subscribe and like if you've liked this video. Honestly, it really helps the channel. Um, just inspires me to get out here more and do it if I see that you guys like it. Um, any questions about my lure outfit today or anything else, just leave it in the comments and I'll answer. Thank you very much. Yeah, just like that. That's what I was talking about getting snagged up.